even though even though the director's not here, I kind of feel obliged to, you know, we should give a round of applause to Elvira in absence. Um, so this is our esteemed panel. <laughs> um, I might get you to introduce yourselves, actually, if that's okay, um, rather than me speaking for you, which I kind of feel a bit uncomfortable doing. So um, for anyone who came in late, I'm Charlie Phillips. I'm the head of, do um, of documentaries at The Guardian. is good for them and we run that um, in London so yeah that's what I do. Uh, hi I'm CJ and I drive trains <laughs> that's about all I do. Um, I'm involved in a lot of kind of like small projects and um, committees but nothing quite as interesting as that. <laughs> uh, I'm Octavian Starr and I work for Stonewall Housing as a supported housing officer. I also do lots of other bits and bobs as well. Um, I do like specialist trans trainings and stuff like that. And I drop pictures. <laughs> Hello, um, my name is Jay Stewart, and I'm one of the co-founders of Gendered Intelligence. Um, we're a community interest company. We work predominantly with young trans people across England now. We've got uh, youth groups in uh, London and also in Leeds and Bristol now. So we work with about 100 young trans people under the age of 25 every month uh, coming through our doors. We do lots and lots of things. We do a lot of work within the education uh, sectors, um, and we do mentoring, which is our one-to-one -one work with young trans people. I could talk about GLI for ages, but I think I'll probably just leave it there. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Um, think, think of things you might want to discuss and ask all of us. I'm going to come out to questions in the audience. I'd like to make this as collaborative as possible. Um, but before we come to that, I, um, I I think none of you had seen the film, at least in full, until just now. So I'd love to hear from all of you how, like, how you react to it, what you thought of it, um, any responses that you have to it. So let's start with you, Jay. Yeah, um, it's always really tricky to respond to a film after you've seen it. Um, I thought it was a pleasant surprise, actually, to see a film that was uh, simple, kind of mundane in a way. You know, not much happens. There isn't high drama. Um, it's really nice to see a story unfold of a, a young trans guy uh, and his uh, relationships, his experience of love, which is just not necessarily um, a theme, a topic that you, you tend to see. So I, I actually have completed a PhD and um, my object of study was documentaries um, in, in the UK. And I think comparatively and still sort of uh, sort of some of the films that we're still, documentaries that we're still seeing. Um, it was just much more positive, much more um, sweet and uh, celebratory and, and kind of an, a non-event in a way, the kind of the trans non-event film, I think, I put it down to, <laughs> but that's a good thing. Put that on the poster. <laughs> Um, yeah, I feel I feel very similarly. It was really nice to like end a film watching a film about a young trans person and not feel crap, <laughs> um, and not feel sad or hopeless. <laughs> um, I've been following Ryan Casado's YouTube for several years, so I'm aware of him, and and I knew a little bit that this documentary was happening, happening because he talked about it in one of his videos. Um, I haven't seen many many of his videos for years, and now I really want to because now I want to see <laughs> um, kind of the follow up from this because he's about twenty twenty one now. Um, but I think it's really nice to see something that is so positive and so simple because I feel like there are a lot of positive and simple documentaries about tons of people, but when there's documentaries about trans people, because it's such a kind of it's not a new dialogue, but it's a very, it's a new dialogue for a lot of mainstream people. And I feel like because of that, we're going through this whole, well, we need to pick it apart and make it really simple for people to understand, which makes me feel very bleak as a trans person all the time. I don't even watch half these, I haven't watched the new Lurie Through documentary, if, if you're wondering, um, <laughs> just because I, I just, I, I just don't want to. <laughs> um, so it's nice to see something like this and really feel so positive and be like, you know, and also his mom reminds me a lot of my mother, which was really nice. She didn't even kind of look alike. Um, so that was, that was really heartwarming for me to see such an amazing parent being portrayed as well and, and this really lovely little journey. So that was, yeah, I really liked it. Um, yeah, I, I do feel quite similar. I think, um, I just think it was really sweet. I'm like, my heart is like, oh. Um, 
And yeah, I kind of, that kind of struck me as well. Like, I don't want to use the word mundane, but because the film itself wasn't, you know, it wasn't boring. I really enjoyed it, but um, it really meant a lot to me to see kind of, especially, I mean, they're so young. Um, but I like that, like, for instance, he had, you know, he wasn't on testosterone, it wasn't an issue. You could see he had scars from surgery, but that wasn't the issue. That wasn't what the film was about. It wasn't, you know, um, 101 shots of him, like, I don't know, putting on makeup in the mirror. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's that kind, it's not, it wasn't that narrative. It was, I, I, I don't know, I thought it was really sweet. I think because, like these guys were saying, like, I see a lot of um, films about trans people and their transition, and it's great that it's out there. It's great that people are getting to know it, but it, it meant a lot to me, I think, as a young trans person to see a film about a young trans person, like a sweet film about a young trans person, like, I don't know, like, falling in love or playing his music and it meant, you know, living life. I think sometimes when I watch um, kind of documentaries about young trans people, it's about their transition and that's great. And then I'm like, but what next? What happens next? What do I, you know, I, I want to see trans people like working in Primark and like <laughs> having just going through life and not, you know, yeah, that's how I felt. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think everyone's basically said everything that I would say. You have to think of something new. To um, say. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's really important to have um, positive representations, particularly of young people. And I think also things that his mum was saying about like how young he was when he was um, coming out. And I think it's it highlights the fact that like people who are that age, like 12, I think it was, that she said, people that age can make decisions about themselves and have those decisions supported. Um, but yeah, it was nice that the focus wasn't like, we're gonna follow them through the surgery process or something like that, because that, I think a lot of people get um, kind of super interested in that and then kind of pass it off as curiosity and it's not really, it's not really okay. So I think it was a good representation of things other than let's just watch all the surgery footage. So. Yeah, keep hold of the mic. Um, great, thanks, Evan. I'm, I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. I do think it's quite a special film. And I, I think it's particularly special because, it, I mean, mundane, actually, I kind of laughed when you said mundane, but actually it's, it's completely true. I mean, it's not a film about being trans. It's, it's a film about a relationship where one of the people is trans, and that is one of the issues there. But it's, 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 it's a love story, and I really I think it's so beautiful. Um, did uh, I think Felix? Maybe you were saying that you you just kept on following Ryan's story, and you were aware of what Ryan's up to now. Um, I'm, I feel I like Lee. I'd seen his videos before I knew that they were going to make this documentary. Like, like a few years ago, when I would watch like loads of um, like there's a lot, there's a huge YouTube community of trans people of all different gender identities, and I think that's a really great resource. And I used to watch loads of those videos because I found them really helpful, just sort of personally. But um, I feel like. Yeah, I guess he's maybe 21 now, um, and I'm not quite sure what is happening, but it seemed like um, he's just sort of in a, I don't know, I guess he's still at university, he's still in San Francisco, but I guess I feel curious about how he feels now about this film still being out there, and like, you know, like that's a kind of, like 18 to tw mid 20s, a lot of changes happen anyway, regardless of whether you're trans or not, and it's just interesting to think about how he might feel about this now, I don't know, I would be interested to find that out. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, I, I probably should have checked this before the screening and seen what's happening now. Um, but I, yeah, it, it will be really interesting to, to know just if they're still together, which I don't I know. I hope so. Yeah, I really hope so. That would be, that would be <laughs> awful if they're not after they've, after they've moved all that. I don't think well, that they are. I don't, I don't think they are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Sorry>. No, <laughs> forget, just forget you here. They are, they are, they are. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're in love. Um, so, I mean, Octavian, you mentioned the you mentioned the Louis Theroux dog, which was on this week, and it is there. There has been this is part of a kind of general increase of stories about transgender people, um, and there does seem to have been this expansion in these stories, especially in the mainstream. Um, I guess I've got a two-part question. Anyone can jump in here. Number one, why do you think this is happening? It's massively overdue. Is there a reason this is happening? Um, and number two, like how how do you react to this kind of mass of stories? Do you feel like they're uh, representing the trans experience well? Do you think there are criticisms you'd make? It's it's a massive question. Yes, no, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think that um, 
you know, there's an increase because there's an increase in trans people being visible. Mm. I think that's the, that's the, you know, the big thing um, is that trans people have stopped being as invisible. You've got people like Laverne Cox, Janet Mock, you know, writing books, being in like major television programs. Um, and that's causing other people wanting to explore it in their different mediums. So documentary filmmakers and um, not so awesome people and, you know, <laughs> all kinds of people want to say things now. Because, you know, when people make themselves visible, then other people feel like they can talk about it whether that's positive or negative. Um, and that goes for everything. <laughs> so, you know, I feel like, you know, that's, that's really what's happening is that trans people are being less and less and less invisible, um, which I think is really good. Um, it's really, really good. It is really scary. You know, there's also an influx of a lot of horrible negative things happening in the US. You know, there's lots of young trans people killing themselves and, you know, that's a very big reality. And, you know, I can't, ignore the impact that really negative statements about trans people are making on, on, on vulnerable people. Um, so that's, that's a huge worry for me because I work with a lot of vulnerable young people, um, some of which are trans, all of which are LGBT. And I feel like there is a really big risk for those kids. Um, so that's a real thing and that's sad, sorry. I had to, had to put that in there. But you know, the, the positive thing is that I'm also seeing a lot of people gaining an interest that should be gaining an interest. You know, people that were never positive nor negative, but are now seeing that they could have a voice in it and actually be helpful towards people and could be allies or mentors, you know, in, in actually make a difference. You know, people who might have a friend that's trans and never really got involved in their lives in that way and maybe now are and, you know, are, are being more of a positive movement. So I'm seeing a lot of that, you know, I have a lot of people tell me that the Louis through through Doctory through documentary and documentaries like it are really positive because it helps them create a conversation with maybe their older parents or, you know, other people and I think that's really good. It might not be my cup of tea, it might not be anything I ever watch, but it it's not necessarily a horrible thing. And I think that it is I think it's created a good um narrative for people, like a lot of other documentaries. But it also you know, there was just a women's hour thing that came on right after it where they had a positive and negative thing um, about transgender being treated by the NHS. And I don't think that that's very good either. So, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things that come out of this, but I think the biggest, base, biggest thing is just having a good narrative, you know, and doing things like this and just really being able to have voices being heard, so. Yeah, does anyone else want to jump in on that? Um, what was the question again? <laughs> it, was, it was a really long two-part question. Um, I guess the first thing was, um, like, why are we seeing an abundance of trans stories? Um, and the second part is um, just whether you had any comments on the kind of range of recent things, like Louis Theroux, like Transparent, like, I mean, I'm not going to list everything. But. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so just I think the fact that there's an online community and YouTube exists and, and the internet exists has just changed the way that trans people have access to information to acknowledge or to recognise who they are. And I think that's just a fact. And, and so then the, the numbers of people coming out as trans to themselves and the numbers of people who are coming out at a younger age are growing. Um, and I think that that's um, a reality. So now, I guess everyone else is kind of responding to that in terms of people around those young people, like teachers and parents. Um, one of my favorite lines actually from a young person was because we tend to say at Gender Intelligence, you know, there will be a young trans person in every secondary school. And I was at a youth group a couple of months ago up in Leeds and one of the young people said, um, I'm not the only per, uh, you know, I'm not, um, no, what did he say? He goes, um, I'm the only young person in my year, as if it's like there's a young trans person in every year, in every, in every school. So I just thought, actually, the expectations from young people are that there's going to be a good sort of 10 young trans people in every school as opposed to one, which is amazing. Um, so I just think the numbers are growing and therefore visibility is and people respond to that. I don't know about the... Um, the kind of narratives or discourse that are coming out of um, current, in the last sort of six months, current documentaries or, or news items. I was having a conversation with my partner last night about whether it was actually going backwards in terms of uh, the negativity and the negative representation. And um, I 
when I kind of was looking at documentaries, I focused, well, between 1979 and 2010. And just after that, My Transsexual Summer came out, which was a kind of a three or four part documentary. And I found that a real, you know, people talked about whether that was a game changer, whether, you know, a representation of, of trans people has kind of shifted, but it kind of hasn't. And I think you still get these tired narratives around transition, medical transition. Um, there's a, you know, a kind of a real focus on young people. I think one of the conversations is how young can you be before you have agency over what you want to do with your gender identity and you know the people seem to think that it's okay to be trans but being a you know under 18 and making decisions about transitioning that's not you know that's not on and I, I watched um is it Gogglebox and they I was watching Gogglebox and they watched the Louis Theroux thing and that was the kind of commentary that came out which I thought was quite interesting that you know people still have a kind of moral uh, panic about young people and what they're choosing to do but I think there's just it's still very alarmist very kind of sensationalized and people are kind of worried or concerned and um and I, it's like for me what what's what is the big deal I'm, I'm on a different planet to that because i just do not get the problem here you know no one is harming anyone there's no irreversible uh, activities taking place you know people are just making social transitions at a younger age and um for some reason people aren't quite um, accepting of that and I find that quite conservative and not very um, progressive at all really. Cool, I don't know, do you want to add anything Felix or CJ? Yeah I feel like um, we're starting to get at the salon a lot of a lot more younger people like 13, 14, 15 and all of those people coming for haircuts are like completely aware of their own gender identity and describe it in very kind of sensitive and nuanced ways and they've all most of them found out about us through kind of YouTube or Tumblr or kind of online platforms. And I feel like the language that they use and the way they describe themselves and talk about themselves is really, they know exactly who they are and they seem really mature and it doesn't feel at all kind of, I don't feel concerned for those young people at all that they are confused or have been coerced or are doing something too young. Like it just feels completely natural and like they seem really happy and confident about it and it's really good. And I think that um, some things, I don't know, I feel like people should just, if, they're, if they've already taken the time to kind of seek out, seek out something for themselves which will affirm their identity, then I feel like they do know what they want and who they are. And I think it's okay to kind of allow them to pursue that. I don't know, I feel like I didn't know that when I was that age, but because I didn't, the stuff on the internet was different, so it's kind of... I guess there's less information, generally. I'll say something quickly. I think I think um, a lot of it has to do not so much even just with um, sort of documentaries and stuff that's on TV. I think a lot of it is to do with social media, but not just because of the visibility, but because of the way you can connect with with people. So even um, sort of uh, kids who aren't trans or cis cisgender kids, like um, so a lot of times when I meet kids and we talk about you know if I if if, if the the topic comes up, it's almost like nothing to them. They're just like yeah. I know what four trans people on Tumblr like. You know, it's not it's not a big deal to them, and it's not just because they've seen documentaries or they've seen movies, um, which is where I kind of feel like. Um, so I, I'm talking about kind of the younger population at the moment because I feel like people who aren't kind of living in that online world um, have a very different idea of it. They're like, oh yeah, I heard about that. I saw a documentary about it. Whereas with the younger generation, it's very much like, yeah, you know, I know I know this many people, or as, even if they've never met them in real life. And so I think that's. A huge part uh, that has a huge part to play in um, in the way we're being kind of perceived now, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I uh, I sometimes get to go to the Mermaids Residentials. Mermaids is an organization that works with trans people that are teeny tiny to nineteen, and um, they do these residentials because they don't have like a home base where all the families come and it'd be like new families. So the last one I went to, there were twelve new families, which was insane. So these were people who. Some of the kids they were bringing were really little, and they bring their whole families, with brothers and sisters, and you know they camp out for a few days. I get to go to another one really soon. I'm really excited. Um, but going to that, and I, I mean I felt this way before, but going to that really affirmed the fact that if children are just given their own agency in a you know protected kind of way, 
I feel like all these kids were so happy. <laughs> you know, they were incredibly happy. Their brothers and sisters were really happy. Their families were really happy. And even the families that were new, the kids were a bit awkward. But what kid, especially the 13-year-olds, isn't awkward? I mean, I did a workshop with the kind of preteen teenager group. And, you know, yeah. pretty standard, bog standard, hopeless 13-year-old. <laughs> You know, stuff, but it had nothing to do with them being trans, really. <laughs> um, but it, it was nice to just see them be able to be that bog standard, you know, that they were in a very safe space. And I'm very aware that when they're not in that space, they're not as safe. And it's nice that there are organizations like Mermaids and like GI, and it's, you know, it's really great to see GI be able to spread out, and Mermaids is starting to spread out as well, and it's really nice to see that. And these documentaries and all of this will help them as well kind of expand and get more support, so that's really good. Um, so there's lots of positive things there, but I really think that, you know, there is a lot of fear-mongering around trans care for under 18s, because there is, you know, the treatment is all very therapeutic, it's not medical. So, you know, I think there is there is a lot of, there's fear mongering and there's a lot of um, fact checking that needs to happen. But I think that once that starts happening, it'll probably hopefully break down. But I kind of agree with Che, it, it does seem to be going a bit backward um, a little bit, but it seems natural to me, you know, if you look at like the history of um, like the LGB liberation movement, there, when positive images started coming up with a whole bunch of negative images and then positive and then negative, you know, and it's, it's, it's very much the kind of, with any kind of liberation movements, I think this is a very, the sea that kind of happens, it's the wave that kind of happens. So I'm just trying to ride it carefully, I guess. Thanks everyone. Um, I'd love to hear any thoughts or questions from anyone out there in the audience. Does anyone want to stick their hand up and say anything? don't have to, you can just listen to us, but I wanted to give you the opportunity. Now you want to think a bit longer? Okay, think a bit longer, that's fine. We'll, we'll just keep talking, but at any point, stick your hand up, it's totally fine. Um, so this, I mean, we've kind of touched on a little bit about the role that films like this can play in educating, inspiring, making pe people feel more comfortable with themselves. Um, I'd love to hear any thoughts on how a, like, y any of you might use a film, both in kind of formal education process or just in kind of talking to friends about um, the trans experience. Um, well, one of the things that struck me with this film, like not so much friends, I'm th I think I'm thinking about family now. Mm. Um, one of the things that really struck me with this film was Ryan's mom and um, that, I think she had a huge impact on me and um, just kind of the way Ryan is and how he's, He's so confident, kind of like for an 18 year old, and he is just, you know, he's just himself. And I think, like, I would really like to show that to, I think, because the film wasn't about that, but that was a huge part of it. And I think I would really like to show that to parents who are kind of struggling to come to terms with their kid as a, I would like to show that to my mom, to be honest. I don't think she'd watch it. But um, I think just to say, look, like, I think there was a part in the film when we all kind of like looked at each other because when, it was when she was like, yeah, it took me a good month to co to come to terms with. And we were just like, oh my God, a month, that's amazing. Like, And she seemed like she felt so bad about it. And I want to be like, look, it's not that hard, you know? And um, even if it is that hard, look at this kid at 18 and look at how, you know, how, how comfortable with himself he is. And it, I think a lot of times people are scared that if they if they, if they they accept their kid as trans, then they're kind of encouraging something that's going to hurt them in the long term. But if you look at kids who, who've been, you know, um, had the support from from a really young age, they're so, you know, there's such a huge difference. And I think I would kind of use films like this. I think it's important to show it kind of in the context, in the whole context. So the film wasn't about, wasn't just about the relationship between Ryan and his mom, because that could seem contrived, or it could look like she's putting that on for the camera. And I think it's really important to show films where it's just the, you know, the whole picture, and then people kind of see as a side effect of that, or you know. Look at that. So I think I would, I would every time I see a film that's anything like this, I, I just think, I want to show that to my mom. But yeah. It, yeah, it just seemed super natural, like the relationship with him and his mom. And it didn't seem... And then there were other things like, you know, if he has a fight with his brother or something, that just seemed really... Mm. It was like this family life is just carrying on and it doesn't... It's not... Like, they're not spending every single second of the day talking about the fact that Ryan is trans. It's just a thing that is there. And yeah, I feel like it's really... It great to have kind of positive representations of family relationships and kind of parent particularly parental relationships and yeah the fact that the mum was like it took me a month like I know people whose 
it's taken their parents five years just to call them by their preferred name and it's like it's just to see that happening so easily for this for this parent and something that kind of came up in the I've seen some of the Louis III documentary, the famous Louis III documentary, but um, a lot of the parents in that, in the portion that I saw of anyway, were really supportive of, the, of their children and were just kind of being like, the, the child is coming to me wanting to do this, it's not me forcing it on the child. And I think something else that the, some of the um, doctors at the clinic who, that were treating the under 18s were saying is that the damage potentially, of course people may change their mind in the future, but anyone can change their mind in the future about anything like but the damage that is done by preventing a young person from choosing their own name and making decisions about their gender the damage that that will do is so much greater and more immediate than the potential damage that might be done by by stopping them so it kind of if, if that happens in the future then you cross that bridge when you come to it but like I talked to my mum about the documentary and she said like well we you know we'll, we were gonna we will let you do it because we could see that it was hurting you but and we'll deal with it in the future if that happens, but it hasn't, so I think it's really rare that that happens. I don't know what the statistics are, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the, just in terms of the uni uniqueness of this documentary, I wanted to sort of say, um, for me, one of the things that I thought was beautiful was um, the kind of, uh, the idea that well, just the kind of the creativity that Ryan has and, and, and the kind of pursuing a creative life um, was really compelling as a story. And something that we notice a lot at Gendered Intelligence, we're always finding it in incredibly amazing just how creative our, our young community seems to be and um, people are using art making processes as a way to, to process their emotions and their sort of psychological um, um, uh, journeys and also I think the thing that was really great was the kind of relationship with the community or the, the kind of uh, embracing the LGBT community as part of the narrative or as a kind of an audience really to sort of pursue that and to to perform too and that's something you just never see in other documentaries the sense of kind of togetherness that trans people have um, and kind of desire to to hear people's stories and to have platforms and you know, and, and I think he also is, you know, that's his life, isn't it? He wants to, you know, he's, he's pursuing, well, perhaps not, I'm not sure what he's studying, but, you know, he's also got this amazing musical career ahead of him as well. And um, so it's just this kind of interesting thing about how he's um, made a documentary, which is kind of going to kind of forward <laughs> further his career as well, you know, and, um, and I think that's, that's great. And that his fan base is part of the community and, um, I didn't know actually whether the or who the audience was for this film. I was kind of thinking, because one of the conversations that's quite common when you kind of have a representation of a trans sort of person or, or a story is, is this for trans people to watch and consume or is it for kind of a mainstream audience? And obviously it, it's never that binary, but um, I was wondering if this has got a kind of a wider release or what the plans were for the documentary. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this is something I did want us to talk about because it, it played it played a couple of festivals. Um, I saw it in Copenhagen at a festival. It played at Hot Docs, which is a big festival in Toronto. Um, I think in this country, it only played at the Rain Dance Film Festival a long time after it had been around. And it has, I, I think it's a great documentary as a documentary. And it really surprises me that it hasn't had a wider a wider release or been seen by more people. And I do worry a bit that that is because of the subject matter, that all distributors saw it and were like, oh no, that's gonna be really niche. You know, that's, you know, that's only for an LGBT audience. Whereas actually, I, I think it's aimed at a general audience. I mean, I don't know what you, you think, but I, to me, this feels like something that anyone would wanna watch. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think it definitely is. I mean, I think it is very much a, a, a movie that might pull the heartstrings of somebody in the in the LGBT community a little bit more, mm. um, maybe. But I mean, I I don't know. I think my mother would love this. I'm totally going to tell her about it and try to find it somewhere for her. I think she would absolutely love this. But also to see something so positive. But it's just so cute, you know. It's a really cute film. So you know, some people don't like cute films, but mm. I think you know people who really like cute films, regardless, would really enjoy this. It's a it's very simple. It's very cute. It's a very nice story about, you know, a young man kind of pursuing his dreams. 
beyond him being trans, this could really be anything, you know? Because there's so many other things in this. He's, he's kind of coming of age, he's pursuing as a career, he's going to college, you know, his girlfriend's parents have issues. Well, parents have issues for all kinds of reasons. So, I mean, this could really be anything. And I think, you know, I really like how him being trans is really not a forefront idea. And that's, that's really good. See, it's interesting that you, that you asked that, I think, because um, I think I didn't really think about it at first, but I think it's quite interesting that um, what you were saying about it, people seeing it and thinking, oh, that's for a niche kind of audience. And I think it kind of speaks to what we were talking about before in that if there's a film about a trans person and it's about them being trans, then, oh, yeah, everyone can see that. That's really good. That's really educational. But the second there's a trans person kind of in a normal role, it's like, okay, but why aren't we focusing more on the transness? And I think, it, you know, um, I think it probably is going to be a little while before we can kind of just have a trans person in a role and, you know, oh, that's a good actor kind of thing. Um, and we see it a lot in, um, in, uh, in, in other communities as well. Um, like, well, I guess, speaking personally, like I see it a lot in films kind of with black kind of um, main characters. Um, you don't get a lot of main Hollywood films where there's a kind of like main black couple doing normal things. And if you do, then it's a black film and it's specifically called a black film. And I, kinda, I think I see that as well in LGBT communities and in especially trans um, stuff. You can't have a trans actor without it being a trans film for trans people. And so that's why, it, it, you know, I would quite like to see it in other film festivals as well. Um, I'd never heard of it before before I got invited to this. And um, I think it would mean a lot to kind of show it in in other film festivals as well. That, that in itself, it, the, I, don't, I don't think any of you really, you sort of, some, I think a couple of you said you were aware the film was being made, but none of you were really aware of it. And to me, it's been around for a while. So the fact that you didn't know it was out there, I think says a lot about how how badly <laughs> it's been it's been released. Um, I'm, can I ask you something about Ryan as a kind of figurehead or inspiring figure? Do you, is it important to have someone who kind of puts themselves out as a kind of inspiring face, knowing that knowing that people will see this and kind of go, you know, you know, I identify with that. You know, that's that that it's important to them. Like, is that is it important to have figureheads like that? If he is a figurehead. I would I say yes. my questions at one of you in particular. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> um, I would say yes. I think um, it's important to have people who put themselves out there. Um, even if they're not, I think just being out there, even if he wasn't a particularly inspiring figure, um, you know, it's important to see kind of people like yourself. So I, I should probably mention I am a young person in gendered intelligence. Um, um, so I, well, I, you know, I'm a bit older now, um, but um, I'm kind of just coming out of going to the youth groups and stuff like that. And when I, when I realized I was trans, it wasn't, you know, when I hear a lot of people now talk about when they realized they were trans, and it's because they saw this on TV or they saw this person on YouTube. And I'm so jealous of them because I think, you know, if I, if I could have seen someone on YouTube when I was younger, everything would have made sense. It would have made, you know, instantly everything would have made sense. But I hadn't even heard about being trans at all until, I, well, until I realized that I was trans, and even then I didn't really understand it. And I think um, because the, representation, the representation sorry, I'd seen on TV of trans people had been kind of this, you know, they were the butt of every joke, but also they all looked the same. They all, it wasn't a real thing. It was this idea that was to be made fun of on TV. And the second I kind of like even saw an actual, you know, a trans person, not even in real life, I think if I'd seen someone online, I would have understood it, but I remember, I um, I was speaking to a psychiatrist about about stuff because my GP actually suggested like okay maybe you need to talk to someone about these issues you're having. He didn't say it, he didn't put a name to it, and I spoke to this psychiatrist and then at the end of it he kind of went, right. So I think you're trans, and I was I was I was mortified. I was like you can't say that. That's horrible. Why would you say that about me? Because I just didn't know. And I think if I'd even seen one person kind of inspiring or not inspiring who'd even said the word transgender to me. Um, things would have made a lot of sense. So I think it's really important actually for people to see, um, for, for there to be people who put themselves out there um, just to say, I am this thing. So that maybe someone like little me <laughs> can like watch it and be like, oh, I am that thing too. There are other people. Um, yeah, sorry I had to get my words together. Um, I'm a little older than CJ, so the internet was not really the internet <laughs> when I was triggering things out. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. Um, 
I mean, I, th I think I first met a trans person in 1999. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, and I, you know, I lived in a big city. I identified as, you know, a lesbian kind of, uh, mostly because other people identified me that way. Uh, and I didn't really have a narrative. I didn't know that transition was a thing at all. I didn't know any trans people. I had no idea. And then I moved to Portland, Oregon, and I'm sure you guys, some of you have seen Portlandia. It really is kind of like that. So um, <laughs> it's, um, Portland is, uh, has a very high trans population and it's a very, you know, very welcoming place. Um, and so I met trans people there and immediately knew. So for me, if that, you know, I was lucky to have that experience, but for people living in more remote places or more remote countries, the internet and documentaries and things like that is the only exposure they're gonna have um, to that information and to that kind of recognition and that narrative in themselves. I mean, I was 19 years old, I still didn't have that narrative. So I think for me, it is really important to have your positive or negative kind of exposure because it gives them at least that kind of, that word, that narrative, that idea that they can kind of apply to themselves and however that's gonna be relevant for them. Yeah, um, I think definitely we need we need um, really happy, vibrant trans people out there doing their lives and inspiring other trans people. I think we we definitely need more of that, and we need a diverse uh, kind of range of people's stories, people's identities, people coming from different backgrounds, um, so that people can recognise themselves across that. So that not all the trans people are white, for example, or not all of them, you know, are from even from urban sort of uh, worlds. <laughs> When we do our mentoring, we match uh, a kind of a trans professional person with a young person. And very often we go to all over the country to quite rural settings and, and they've never met another trans person um, before. You, they can kind of, you can, I'm a mentor as well, so I can sometimes be the only person that they know. So this is still really current in 2000. 15 we're in now, <laughs> um, that, that, is, that, that that is a reality for a lot of people out there. So I guess definitely we need to have representations on different platforms across different media, but we also have to um, give people opportunities to have a live encounter with other trans people. I mean, I'm obviously a big advocate for the community and I, I think it's just an amazing thing uh, when you can bring young trans people together or just trans people generally. That was my personal experience as well. Um, so, uh, so I think it's just really important to have opportunities for people in their local settings to reach other you know, people who have got similar thoughts in their head, similar experiences and s similar kind of identities emerging, definitely. Uh, yeah, I guess just to pick up on what Jay said about who, like who is getting represented and who isn't getting represented and how I think it's really, I think it's great that Ryan is out there doing his thing and I think, but I think that it's also important to think about like the people that aren't represented and the people that like fall below the radar, I guess. And I think that, you know, like you have to have a reasonable amount of privilege in order to access surgery, particularly in the States, it costs a lot of money, it costs a lot of money in this country if you want to go privately and have surgery, waiting times are really long, um, if you're going to go down the kind of NHS route, and I think there's also, there's a lot of people like um, like migrant trans people, trans people of colour, like trans people who are in the prison system, who don't really get the same attention or don't get the same kind of, they sort of fall below this idea of like, oh, well, there's been a bunch of people on TV and there's been a bunch of people putting themselves out there, but not everyone has the facilities to do that. And I also think um, it's important to represent people who aren't binary identified, like a lot of the, a lot of the medical systems, particularly in this country, like f sort of force you into particular ways of doing things. So to have representations of people that are non-binary identified or identified in different ways and kind of make sure that the like most marginalised the voices are heard, I think is really important in terms of like who we're seeing, who's out there and stuff. Um. Well, thanks everyone. Um, I'm just gonna give a chance to anyone out there who wants to ask something, just in case you do. Okay, you can stay quiet. Um, um, I just wondered if anyone had any comments on Alexis as a character in there, um, because um, watching it, this is, this is only the second time actually that I've seen this, and I kind of feel like by the end of it, you don't, you don't actually feel like you know very much about her, and that's probably a choice of the filmmaker because she's not the main character, but how just, um, 
like, what do you what do you think of her? Like, do you, do you feel like you have a sense of her as an individual human being? Um, well, I think it was all kind of explained to me when they got to the point where they said how old she was, yeah. and then I got it because yeah. I was like, oh, this seems a bit, you, you know, like she seems like she's a bit more immature than Ryan and and is really struggling quite quite a lot, and you know, I could see that they weren't focusing on her a lot. Mm -hmm. It may have been because she was 15. There are, they may have had to sign a disclosure agreement as to how much information mm -hmm. they could give because of her age. Um, so that, that might be part of it as well. But um, I said, well, to be 15, but then to be 15 and to have the kind of wherewithal to be able to be in a documentary with your trans boyfriend who your father hates and has threatened you know, the life of and, and all these things, I think that's, that says a lot about her as a person as well. And I think, you know, she seemed very genuine, but it seemed very age appropriate to me. You know, I, I felt like, you know, her, the way she was and the way he was seemed very age appropriate. So I, I, I don't know. I, I felt like I could know a little bit about her, a little bit more about her, but I've spent a lot of time with 15 year olds and I don't really know much about them at all. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe if we could have known more about her, who knows? Yeah, no, it's interesting because I, I had that thought as well, actually, in how much. Um, how much maybe a criticism you might offer of the documentaries is, is to sort of ask questions around whether she was kind of just the object mm -hmm. in the relationship and that you don't really get her story and you know most of the commentary was about what she looked like and how cute she was and you know it was about his love for her as a main thread I think and and um, and in that sense not that queer perhaps um, r reasonably kind of heteronormative in, in, in the way that that was kind of represented. Um, so yeah, I don't know about that. I, I think you don't know that much about her, but I, um, I'm not sure I, I'm not sure if it's just an age thing. I think there's kind of obviously edited choices there as well. And um, it's difficult where to sort of put the, put the energy, but um, yeah. And it was kind of very, it was kind of like, um, you know, it's a portrait of him, really, wasn't it? More than anything else, and and his kind of passion and, and creativity and, and feelings, um, and I, and I think his his um, relationship with masculinity was really good. I thought he was kind of really emotional, and all of that was really really um, powerful and very huggy, and you know, and and was quite open and happy about about, about sort of um, uh, sharing his feelings. Um, but you didn't really know, you didn't really kind of get to know her, you didn't really know if sh how she was feeling. And I was thinking about if they stay together, whether it was something because she probably was not as in love as he was or something like that. <laughs> I kind of got that sense, but that's just me projecting probably. <laughs> yeah, I think you're probably, I don't know. I was kind of thinking a lot of that as well. I, I feel like, you know, it's kind of a cool thing to like go along with the documentary as well. <laughs> like and say, oh, this is cool. But you know, when it's over, who knows? It might've just been a good little journey in, in their lives. They're both very, very young. So it's really hard to, to know, but it's happy to see that it was done. And I'm, you know, I was happy to watch it. I thought that was really cute. I, I think it could have done a little bit more about her though. Cause at times I was just like, does she want to be filming right now? Like, you know, and she's looking really awkward and, you know, hiding her face and stuff. And I felt like maybe those shots could have not been there because it made her look quite awkward. I don't know how she's going to feel about that now if she, if she watches it again, but um, probably a bit embarrassed. Um, so, you know, I don't know. This is... Well, she, seems, she seems to be the same even as YouTube videos, though. So maybe that is just her. Maybe yeah. she's just, I mean, you know, even when they were kind of filming together in the YouTube videos, he was like prompting her, like, go on. You know, so maybe that's, I don't know. I was a bit like that when I was... 15, 16, so. Yeah, I guess it represents people at a t time in their life, but I thought a lot about how that person who made the documentary like got in touch with them, the decisions that were made about when they filmed, like how did they just happen to be filming when like all the, the like arguments were happening? Like how is it that the camera is there at the moment when everyone's crying? Like how, how did that all, I feel like I don't, I have questions about how like staged or not staged that may or may not have been. Because it's r unless you have the camera there like all of the time, how likely is it that you're going to have the camera there when all the emotional breakdown is happening? I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I I was I wasn't actually going to bring that up unless one of you did. But um, again, watching it for the second time, 
that, and with my kind of documentary craft head on, yeah, like some of it does seem quite kind of, I'm not gonna say staged, because I don't think it is, but I think there is a bit of kind of molding going on there, which is fine, people do that in documentary. I mean, it, it does, you know, that does happen, but um, it is interesting, and I do wonder whether it is to do with I guess a duty of care towards Alexis because she is so young. I don't know, but it is it is something that you know we should chew on. Maybe um, is there a question at the back? Cool. Yes. We'll just um, just wait for the microphone to come to you so it um, picks up on the camera. Thanks. Um, yeah, my question was just kind of following on from that because the director's voice really isn't a part of the film and it's kind of led by the characters, and I just wondered. And in, in almost to the extent that it feels a bit dramatized. And I just wondered, if it had been different, how would you feel about you know, tackling the subject matter? If, if that had influenced you know, the way that you felt that the, the story was naturally portrayed, in a way. Um, do you mean like if the director had, had more of a yeah. voice? Um, I think, I guess my perspective is slightly different because I've seen his YouTube videos. And I think it's different because Obviously, he and Alexis decided to put their own stuff on YouTube, a lot of which kind of are th a lot of the videos that they put up on YouTube are things that come up in the film. So, but obviously, that's entirely controlled by them. But I think it's good that it felt like there wasn't that much kind of the director controlling things because I think it's really important to let everybody, but particularly trans people, speak for themselves because so often we get spoken for or about or on behalf of. Um, and so I think I probably wouldn't have liked it as much had there been more, we're gonna film you talking about this now or this now, or like talk to me about how you feel about your surgery and stuff like, so it just like, it felt reasonably natural like, cause I, because I know that he uploads sort of surgery update videos of his own accord to YouTube because I knew that information. It didn't feel con necessarily that contrived that the director had chosen to feature that because it was like, well, I know that he does this anyway and I know that like loads of people on YouTube do that. So it's kind of felt representative of the, the kind of choices that he may have made outside the film. So I thought that was quite good. Um. Well, I, um, I think there's a, you can, you can tell there's a huge difference between kind of uh, documentaries like this, which are led by the characters and the ones which are led by um, sort of a producer and a point of view. And again, the Louis III documentary, for instance, like um, there's a quite a lot of it where you see these moments and you, you know, you, obviously he's asking them questions and that's great. And you, you kind of come to you come to a conclusion about it or you hear their voice about it and then all of a sudden his voice will come over. Like um, there was the... Uh, the young person whose name I can't remember, I, I don't know how many of you have seen the documentary, but there was a young person in it um, who kind of like one day is happy to live as, as Cole and the next day as um, in a female kind of role. And in a, you know, they were perfectly happy with it. Their siblings were perfectly happy with the setup. And then I looked at that and I thought, wow, like this kid is, you know, um, clearly, you know, gender fluid or I don't know, may have another identity, but it's really great that you just show them in that. And then at the end of that section, Louis Theroux comes on and, think, and says something like, you know, something about her choosing choosing a role. And I was like, why did your comment have to come in on that? And so I think that a lot of the documentaries about trans people are very much, um, the, the, the final comments are always the, com the, the producer's kind of point of view. And another example, if you've seen My Transsexual Summer, that was very much led by the producers. But then if you look at um, the My Generation videos that Fox and Lewis off of My Transsexual Summer have been doing, they're very much, let, you know, they, they, it, it came out of that. It was very much, well, we, we didn't get to tell our own stories, so we're gonna do it now. And if you look at the difference between the Channel 4 documentary and the, um, the, video, the My Generation videos that Fox and Lewis have been doing, they're so different. And I think you get a lot more emotion, you get a lot more of the actual person um, out of the, the kind of character-led um, documentaries, so I think this one, you, you, you know, it was very, it was personal to, to Ryan and Alexis, and that would have been different if there was someone speaking over it and kind of like trying to steer you in a, you know, and feeling a particular emotion at a particular time. So I, I quite liked it. I, I think I liked it a bit better because it was so character-led. Yeah, I agree. I think um, I agree with all of that. <laughs> um, I think it's, it was nice to, to not have somebody speaking over it, and I, th I think. A lot like Felix as well, I've been following him for so many years on YouTube that it didn't feel that staged to me. 
I think they did try to use some of the YouTube videos to fill some of the holes and things, and I think that was uh, really ingenious. He has so many, though. I mean, years and years and years of videos. I probably only watched maybe 5% of them. Um, so I think it was nice that they did that, and I like that they used his music throughout, and they used different songs at different times, I noticed, um, to kind of frame what was happening in the film. And I really kind of like that. Like, you know, he was saying the, the song about his mother right before he left and things like that. And uh, that kind of killed me a little bit. <laughs> there was a tear. The one tear came in that in that scene. Yeah, that was, I had, I had a little bit of a misty eye. Um, but, you know, I think it might have been that they asked him to keep a camera at home. Maybe his brothers did some of the filming but it did it didn't seem too staged to me but even if it was I don't really care I think I didn't feel like no, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter no I mean no but I felt like sometimes I care when I think it might be being staged but in this instance I didn't it didn't really bother me so we need to finish up now but thank you everyone for coming along um this is uh, really enjoyable um and I'd like to thank um, Jay Octavian CJ and Felix for being a brilliant panel and um hope to see you again soon